Hello tarot friends, it's Liz and today I'm here to talk about um, December. So um, at first I thought that I wasn't going to have much to say about December um, because I really um, only used one tarot deck. Um, but then as I was sort of gathering things together, I realized that I actually had um, quite a few things to, um, to show and tell. So um, I guess I am going to start with uh, books. I have a big old pile here. So let me just say that this came to me, We Moon 2022. And um, my sister, Julia, has been gifting this to me um, every year as a solstice gift for more years than I can remember. And I absolutely love it. And I keep it up here in my sacred space and just kind of look at it uh, on and off all year long. So this is, um, this year's theme is the magical dark. And the first, this is um, based on um, moon cycles. So the first uh, moon cycle uh, of the year, it's January 2nd through 31st, is the dark, sorry, the dark goddess. And they, um, if you're not familiar with the Wee Moon um, calendar, it's full of poems and snippets of essays and beautiful pieces of visual artwork um, that uh, women make and send in to um, the collective. Um, and it's printed by Mother Tongue Inc. And it's been going on for, my oh gosh, it has to be 30 years or more. Not sure, I should have looked that up. But anyway, I just wanted to read you. So this first um, little bit is called Footprints in the Dark. And it's by Melissa Cos Aquino. And um, I just thought it was lovely. So it's called Footprints in the Dark. She appeared just before New Year's Eve in the Bronx. It was getting dark out. We're trained not to go out after dark, but we do it anyway. The graffiti whispered like the ending to a bedtime story. Earth is alive. She is the mother of the humans. It was not the usual writing on the wall. It was not beautiful or colorful. It was written in huge, stark white letters. There she was, just outside the parking lot at Target with the Major Deegan to her left and the number one train to her right. My journey to the dark goddess through Durga Ma and Kali had been underway for years. It began in dreams from lands far from home and in darkness. I arrived at her feet like so many before me, bent over in despair. She taught me cycles of descent and ascent. She taught me that my body was the original calendar, my blood the translator of the moon. The darkness became holy and offered sanctuary for seeds of every kind. I learned and listened and bloomed under cover of night. I found her in a dream, then a book, then a journey. She invited me to recognize her footprints in the dark, in graffiti on a wall in the Bronx. I found her because I gave myself permission to leave my house after dark. So I just love that. I love how she says, she taught me that my body was the original calendar. And I love to see the darkness framed in a positive way um, for so many reasons. Um, I'll just leave it at that. So I wanted to just show you a piece of art, visual art for this um, cycle. Is um, This is Ave Medusa goddess of the harrowing future future and it's by jean rains so this is a lovely lovely journal and calendar full of poetry and visual art and all kinds of things to to celebrate um women and i am very grateful that my sister gifts that to me every year 
So further on with books, honestly, I got a pile here. So um, in December, I brought this book in. It's the Herbal Alchemist Handbook, A Complete Guide to Magical Herbs and How to Use Them by Karen Harrison. And um, I'm an herbalist, as uh, many of you know, and I use herbs in for many different things, for healing and rituals, uh, teas. I make salves and lotions and all kinds of potions. I use them in candle magic and so forth. Um, and I have many, many uh, medicinal or healing herbal books, but I really didn't have one like this. So I thought um, I should bring this in uh, as, a, as a reference. And um, I started reading it um, and it goes through and associates um, herbs with the different planets. Um, and then, um, so it quickly talks about that. And then it goes on later in the book to show how you can use herbs um, in ritual. Um, another thing I want to learn about is using sigils in magic. So I picked up this one, Sigil Witchery by Laura Tempest Zakroff. And this is really good. I'm just a little way into it. But um, I like it because it starts off um, with the history of symbols and um, how, you know, we all, all humans started in one place in Africa and how then we spread out around the globe. And she makes a connection between um, how there some symbols are seen in many, many cultures and, and mean the same thing. So it's really interesting reading about the history of symbols and um, sigils. And then this book was recommended to me by a YouTube friend, Chakra Mantras, and I, I just started this one and uh, it's, it's really good. So I'm an Aries, Jack of all trades, master of none. And I'm also um, sanguine, the sa a sanguine temperament, which is, you know, sort of magpie-ish, anything sparkly and shiny. Ooh, a new idea. Ooh, well, you can see. Ooh, magical herbs. Ooh, mantras. Ooh, sigils. <laughs> so I am often reading, um, I mean, like eight or 10 books at the same time. And then I don't finish them. It gets confusing. And so... I have made kind of a intention or a goal for 2022. I'm going to take my to be read pile, which is quite large, and I'm just going to say, all right, so for January, which two books do you want to concentrate on? Then for February, which two books? And hopefully I will get through my um, piles of to be read. We'll see how that goes in the December 2022 video. I'll have to give an update on that. This is a fiction book I'm reading. I'm from, I got it from my local library. It's called The Personal Librarian by Marie um, Benedict and Victoria Christopher Murray. And it tells the story of um, Belle DaCosta Green, who was the personal librarian to um, J.P. Morgan. And so I thought it was pretty much all fictional. Belle de Costa Green um, comes from a family of color, an African-American family. And um, her father was um, sort of a contemporary of, um, of other outspoken um, black scholars of the age of the day. Um, he was one of the first um, black men to graduate from Harvard. Uh, he was quite brilliant and very much um, outspoken for um, civil rights. Um, anyway, um, her parents looked at race differently and her mother wanted, to, uh, wanted her children to succeed and did not think they could succeed um, moving forward as people of color. So her parents split up and her mom took the family from Washington DC up to New York. And on the way they changed, they changed their last name. They came up with a story saying that the grandmother is Portuguese 
um, they were light skin and so they began to pass. And um, because of that, um, Bell gets hired by J.P. Morgan to be his librarian. So, as I said, I thought it was a fic all fiction, but I did Google it, and she it was a real person, and she was J.P. Morgan's um, librarian. And um, I didn't quite realize what that means, but it would it now in nowadays dollars, it's like being the personal librarian to a billionaire. You know, a billionaire says, okay, I want to build my collection. I want to get rare manuscripts. I want art. I want all this stuff for my personal library. And that's what she did. She traveled to Europe and all over the world and all over the United States and, um, you know, bought things and got things for J.P. Morgan's collection. So, Pretty, pretty interesting. I have not finished that yet, but I hope to by the end of this week. So those are my books. Um, this was my card of the month, The Empress. So I loved when I pulled my card on December 1st. Um, I was feeling raw and ragged and I just thought, oh, please don't be the Tower of the Ten of Swords. <laughs> And when I turned it over and now I saw the beautiful Empress, I was like, oh, thank you. <laughs> um, and so she sort of soothed my soul all month. Like many people I've, I've heard saying this December 2021 was a rough month. It was a rough month for me and my family too. Not the best of times, but you know, we survived and we're moving forward. And um, the Empress helped me, helped soothe my soul. Um, this is from Starlight Illuminated. New decks that came into my collection. So I've wanted this one for a, a long time, but just never bought it. And then I decided, oh, I think I'm going to finally get that, the Soul Trees Ascension deck. And it was out of print. So it's by Allison Williams Yee. And I have the regular Soul, uh, Soul Trees deck. And I absolutely love it. Um, I bought an extra copy of it and I will pull cards and, you know, put them in letters when I send people a letter or if I do a reading for someone, I'll send them a card. Um, and so I use, I have a full copy that I use for pulling, um, but then I have another copy that I just use um, to gift to people a card here and there on their birthday or whatever. This is gorgeous. Um, so it did come back into print. And I'm um, just going to show you a few cards. I think Allison's art is absolutely beautiful. I love her keywords. So this is Ascension. This is not in order because I've shuffled it. Be spontaneous. Make a wish. Mind. So this is a little bit different because as you can see, be present. It's not just trees. Healing holding back, instinct, and I love this one, body. So um, I, it's, it, the colors are gorgeous. The keywords are, are, um, are nice. They're not, you know, sugary sweet. There's a wide variety. Um, and I, I find, I find it to be a very, uh, well, I found the soul trees to be a very useful deck. Um, I've only used this a couple times. I did pull my kind of word of the year from this deck and I, I pulled duality. So that is a lovely deck and I look forward to getting to know that one better. So I went a little bit down a rabbit hole in December and um, I'm not even remembering how it started, sadly, but I, somehow went down a rabbit hole of the she. Um, and I got this book by John Matthews. It's a, it's a hundred pages. I, I still have about 20 pages left. Um, and it's just really lovely. It's kind of um, maybe what you might call channeled. I mean, John Matthews meets up with a, a member of the she and that um, she is giving John Matthews information about the she and um, uh, their relationship with humans and how um, 
our future and the future of the she are connected and kind of saying that we humans kind of need to wake up and, and, and get to it and, and raise our vibrations um, and, and understand what life's all about. Or it can mean not only the demise of humans, uh, but also the she. So it, it's a fascinating book. It is one of those channeled books that, I don't know, I love, I love them. Like um, I've read um, a bunch of Hilarion. This is 30 years ago, probably. Jane Roberts and Seth, Hilarion, um, Agartha. I, I don't know. I find them really um, interesting. And in this book, John Matthew says something that I think is is kind of interesting. And I've I've thought this myself. So he asked the she. He said, "How do I know that I'm really having this conversation with you, and that I'm not just making this stuff up in my head?" And I ask myself that time that sometimes too when I get messages. Am I getting a message or am I just making this up? So the she said, what difference does it make if it's coming from in you or outside of you? Are not the messages worthwhile and um, worthy? And I thought that was really a good point that, yeah, whether this is made up from John Matthews or really uh, channeled from a member of the she, um, the messages are important and things that I think we need to really think about and work on as as human beings and as, um, you know, inhabitants of this earth. Um, so anyway, that's the book. And then from there, um, I went on to um, get this deck, card deck of the She by David Spangler and um, Jeremy Berg. So it's a book and a oracle, a she oracle. Um, let's see if I, it's in a little bag. The book is quite substantial. It's actually a lot meatier and bigger than the John Matthews. I have not started this. This is gonna be my February project. I made goals this year and a plan. I'm so proud of myself. So this is just what the artwork looks like on the cards. It's, it's really, um, that's the symbol of the she. It, the cards are lovely and I'm, I'm looking forward to this. I have never been drawn to work with the she or read about the she. And um, my ancestry is Scottish. Both my dad's parents were born in Scotland and um, so, you know, I have a Celtic uh, background, Scottish, not Irish, but still um, there is, there the she are important in um, Scottish mythology and culture as well as Irish. So, you know, it makes sense. So then of course, I had to buy this deck, the Tarot of the She. So again, um, I have not started to work with this and I, did not intend to. Um, this was a. I got it in December, but it's a twenty, a twenty twenty one project, twenty twenty two project, and um, you know, this is a deck that's been around for a while. I'm sure many of you are familiar uh, with it. I've seen, especially years ago, it was quite popular, and I had seen um, quite a few folks um, posting with it. And I know. Oh, and here's the the backs of the card the symbol, um, the glyph, the she glyph. <laughs> um, so, um, that's my project for February. And I'm, I'm, I'm interested to see how I, uh, get on with, uh, those decks and with my, um, you know, reading and, and research, um, and studying of the she. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to that. So decks for December, um, I started in October, October 15th to be exact, um, a challenge called Drop 78. And it was, um, created by and, and, um, sort of administered by Esther at Mindful Tarot. 
And um, so she put out a call to folks to participate in this Drop 'em 78. Um, apparently, um, as of October 15th, there are 78 days left in the year. And so she said, join in. Sip of tea. Um, join in with one deck and use one deck for the last 78 days of the year, one card a day. Um, she directed us in the order that we went in. We started with the Ace of Pentacles and we finished on December 31st with the World card. And um, she said, don't use any other decks during this time period. And I was like, oh, I, a tarot deck, she said. Thank goodness. I did dabble in a few um, Oracle decks. So that was it. That was my deck for the last 78 days. Um, the um, Oh, I didn't even tell you the name of the deck that I chose. <laughs> um, it's the Guy by Joanna Powell Colbert. And I've had this deck for many, many years. Um, I think it came out in 2013 or 14. Um, it was published at that time by Llewellyn, and I, I got it straight away when it came out. And I've always loved it, um, but I never did a deep dive with it. So um, it was really interesting pulling one card a day. We had sort of a little formula to follow um, how we looked at the cards, um, and we would post in Esther's Facebook uh, group, there was there were quite a few people doing the challenge, and it was really fun reading. Um, there were people using Marseille decks. One person was using Osho Zen Tarot. One was using Mariel, um, which is Wisdom, Rider Waite Smith, um, Thoth, uh, all different kinds of decks. So it was really fun, and I learned a lot from reading other people's posts, but also. Um, myself. So um, these are the majors. We did finish with the majors. I'm not going to. Um, so on the 31st, we um, ended with the world. And it was so interesting to me because when I took the time to really look at each card, many, many cards I saw things on that I had never noticed before. And I've been using this deck for you know, eight or eight years or so. And I was really surprised by that. And I thought, wow, what else do I not see? And, you know, how interesting it is when we slow down and focus and just spend our time with one deck, how much more we see and you know, when I would see these different things, I also got different ideas about the cards. And, you know, I did keep a journal um, uh, that I wrote my uh, thoughts down in. And it was really, really, really enlightening and really interesting. And, and it was hard for someone. I, I just mentioned, I'm an Aries. I'm sanguine. I am reading 10 books at the same time. And to really focus and limit myself to one tarot deck for 78 days, um, I have to say I was really proud of myself on, you know, December 31st when I pulled the word ca world card and I thought, I did it. <laughs> I did it. I stuck to it. It was such a great experience. I learned so much about this deck um, and uh, it was really quite enjoyable. But I have to say now that we're in January and it's a new month, I am ready to look at some decks that I missed. I missed some of my little precious ones. But anyway, it was a really good experience. And um, if Esther does it again next year, or if you want to just do it yourself, um, it's a really interesting uh, project. So, um, of course, um, I did also use, um, as I do every month, every day, um, the um, Living Wheel Astrology cards. And um, in December, we moved from the late fall card to the early winter card. Um, 
here's this beautiful, um, so Patrick Fogarty is the creator of this deck, the Living Wheel Astrology Cards, and he lives in Bar Harbor, Maine, which is right next to Acadia National Park, and a lot of these season cards that Patrick painted um, are from Acadia, one of the most beautiful um, places I've ever been. It's absolutely stunning, as you can see from this artwork. So um, every day on my altar, I have the sun card and the sun sign, um, the moon phase and the moon, the, the sign the moon is in, and then the earth and the season. So that's something that um, is always out on my um, altar, and I, I talk about it all the time. So the other deck that I used in December is this one. Seasons of the Witch, Yule Oracle, um, by Lorraine Anderson and Juliet Diaz, and artwork by Giada Rose. <sighs> I wasn't even going to mention it, but I thought, you know, I honestly believe in honest reviews of decks. Um, it doesn't make any sense to me to only talk about decks that you like and to not mention decks that miss, hits and miss, some hits, some miss. This was a miss for me, unfortunately. I so wanted to like it because I love the concept of this. I think it would be so fun to have one deck for every spoke of the wheel. Um, and that's what these um, creators are planning to do. Also, they are women of color, and um, I think it's important for us to support um, people of color in our um, tarot community, creators uh, of color. Um, but this deck just fell flat for me. It just didn't speak to me. So um, I'll talk about a couple things. One is, um, so... Um, I did get the Yule, the, I'm sorry, the Samhain deck, and I was really shocked because there were hardly any representations of people of color uh, in that deck. And I thought, is it, this is created by people of color. What's up with that? So I sent it back because um, I just was like, yeah, no, I'm not really interested in this. So interestingly enough, in this guidebook, the um, authors um, have, a, have a, a little section and it's uh, called The Call for Diversity in Magic. And here's what they say. We want to send you our deepest and most sincere apology for not showing up for people of color in our previous deck of this series. We are POC authors and we have long recognized the call for diversity in magic. Magic comes in all shapes, colors, sizes, and I would add ages, and what seems like an unlimited number of ways to practice. But we won't lie to you. It's taken us years of personal practice to understand the need for better representation in the magical community. Not because we didn't want to see it, but because issues about race are generational wounds that take time to heal. When we created Seasons of the Witch, Saw, and Oracle, neither of us was ready to face the manifestation of that wound in ourselves. We were trying to teach magic in the most accessible ways and sadly lost our cultural roots for a time. Seasons of the Witch, Saw, and was well on its way to publication by the time we realized our mistake. When we began to create the Yule deck, we knew without a deck that pe people of color had to be represented. So um, I honor them for addressing that and for speaking from the heart. And um, this deck does have um, good representation in it, or better anyway. Um, so that's really nice. Uh, I'm happy to see that. Um, the artwork, I think, is lovely, but I don't know. It just fell flat for me. I decided that I was going to use this deck the same way that I use um, Stacy DeMarco's Halloween Oracle uh, in October. So what I do is I shuffle the deck, and each day I pull one card. 
and then I leave that aside and shuffle the deck and pull one card so that, you know, with 31 days in the month, there I get 31 different cards. But this I don't know, I just I just they just didn't speak to me. And they have these little verses on them that I just like I don't get them. I don't understand. They don't speak to me. They don't make sense to me. And then when I read the guidebook thinking, well, I'll get more meaning from the guidebook, I really didn't. So I actually threw in the towel with this deck about halfway through the month. And I'm really sad about that because I so wanted to like this deck. Um, but as I said, it just fell flat. And, you know, it's okay. Every deck isn't meant for every person. And, um, you know, maybe the next one, the um, Beltane one um, that comes out uh, will speak to me and I'll enjoy. I'm, I'm going to give it a try. Uh, hopefully I'll like it better. Um, but but I felt like um, on those verses, on the, the cards, there were some really weird grammatical problems. And I don't, this was published by Rockpool, and I'm not sure why the folks at Rockpool didn't catch that and didn't correct that. But anyway, whatever, they didn't. So that's, I'm going to move that along to someone else. I know a lot of people are posting this deck and are liking this deck. So you know, I may be the only person that doesn't like it. I don't know. Um, and it's not that I don't like it. I like the artwork. It just, like I said, fell flat for me. So I'm going to move it on to somebody else. And, um, you know, I'll uh, hope that the um, Beltane one and I um, get along okay. So um, my herb... Oh, my herb for December is white pine. And in my uh, backyard, I have lots and lots of white pine, uh, eastern white pine trees growing. Um, and what I do is I, I go out and I thank the trees for their um, healing medicine. And then I will, um, you know, cut, cut some, a few, a few pieces. And um, then I come in and I have one of those... Um, French press um, teapots, glass pots, and I will um, take um, these sprigs of pine and cut them up into little teeny pieces, including the little twig branches that they're on. And I'll, you know, fill up maybe about this much with uh, white pine needles at the bottom. And then I pour um, boiling water over and let it steep for anywhere from a half an hour to a couple hours. And it makes such a delicious, oh, it's sweet and piney and wintry and oh, it's just wonderful. Um, full of vitamin A and C and antioxidants and it's anti-inflammatory and um, it's an amazing medicine um, for us to grow, have growing in New England green in the winter. Um, it's the only thing that I can harvest in the winter. I mean, I guess I could harvest winter green, but um, that's the only thing I can harvest. And I miss my garden and I miss my plant spirits um, who are all underground um, or dried in my herbal closet uh, in the winter. And so to be able to go out into my yard in December, January and February, um, and harvest something green to make tea with um, is absolutely um, bomb for my soul and medicine for body, mind, and spirit. And I, I urge you to, to check it out. Um, make sure that you identify your trees. You don't want you. Um, certain hemlocks are <laughs> lethal. So make sure that you know what you're doing. You can see these of growing little bunches of five. This is um, Pinus strobus or Eastern white pine, but white pine grows all over the United States and in parts of Europe and um, other parts of the world. And it really is an incredible healing tea. And it 
it connects me to the land and the history of the land. Um, I live on the land of the people of the First Light, the Mashpee Wampanoag, and I, I picture them um, for all the years that they've lived on this land, and I'm sure made use of white pine um, for their winter medicine. And it just connects me to the land and the ancestors of this place. And um, it's really, um, like I said, it's it's food for my spirit um, as well as healing um, medicine. And then last but not least is my um, crystal for December. And I know this looks sort of smoky, but it's a citrine, C citrine. And um, it's absolutely gorgeous. It's just, oh, I can feel it. I can feel its vibration. It's a beautiful, beautiful piece. Um, and I got this from Patrick at the Living Wheel. Um, he also, in addition to his Living Wheel deck, um, from time to time, like once or twice a month, we'll have a crystal sale and has um, really beautiful um, crystals um, that are ethically sourced. So that's my December. I thought I wasn't going to have much to say, but apparently that was wrong. Um, I want to say thank you to everyone who um, subscribes to my channel, who stops by and watches my videos and leave comments and, you know, send me private messages and buy my herbal products and get readings from me and just... It's just so wonderful to have an online community. And I want to thank you all, all of you who um, interact with me on um, YouTube. I really greatly appreciate having a community here. Um, and I want to wish everyone a happy and healthy um, and abundant new year. So bright blessings to you all. Go outside in nature and find some white pine. Blessings to you all.